Okay, so here's how uh, the process works. Um, step number zero, I guess, is to allocate uh, enough time for you uh, so that you uh, have at least an hour um, with your group together, quality time. Uh, it's uh, Usually you're uh, through after an hour, but it's good because in the end you tend to have really generative, great conversations. It's good to maybe add another 10, 15 minutes uh, to your schedule so you don't have to dash out right away, but really can um, uh, dwell in that space uh, that the case clinic creates for you and for the entire group. And then um, after allocating the time for you here, you also need a good quality space where there's not a lot of noise and where you can have a good quality conversation. Uh, very, very important, uh, obviously, for the um, uh, in-person groups. But if you also, when you do it virtually, um, it's also very useful to have like a space where you're on your own and really can uh, have minimal distraction for the period of the case clinic. Um, then uh, step number one is selecting roles. So basically uh, agreeing on uh, who is the case giver this, this time, uh, who is the timekeeper, and then everyone else, including the timekeeper being the coaches. Um, do that quickly. Don't spend more than two minutes kind of on this first step so that you really move that into the real action right away, which then um, continues with um, number two, intention statement by the case giver. So often it's useful to, you know, uh, it can be a flip chart, it can be a piece of paper to use a little bit of drawing if you have an in-person meeting. Uh, if you do it virtually, kind of over a hangout, you can also use some drawing. Or you just kind of uh, describe your situation uh, uh, without a drawing in any form that's useful for you. So you can really use any kind of format, but um, you have to make sure that somehow in that 10, 15 minute time frame, you hit on uh, all of these five points. Number one, what's the current situation like? What does it look like, feel like? Number two, you know, how do others view this uh, situation? Kind of what's their take on kind of uh, uh, making sense of uh, the current situation that you described? Number three, intention. What is the future that you want to create? What does success really look like? Four, what is your learning edge? And by learning edge, we mean what is it you need to let go of? And what is it that you need to learn? For most of us, um, uh, the, so for most of us, the following principle applies which is what got us here will not get us there. So the very practices and behaviors that made me successful in the past are not exactly the same that will make me successful in dealing with the current challenge that I face. So this is um, the learning edge is really the invitation for you to turn around the camera back onto yourself, not only talk about all the other idiots around us kind of who are causing all the problems, but really kind of now looking at yourself and asking yourself, why is it that in my own biography, in my own journey, I am now facing this kind of situation? And what is it that, what is this situation inviting me to let go of? And what is it that's inviting me to learn? So that's a very important one. So I will underline that because it really adds kind of a, a deeper personal dimension to the whole uh, case clinic that's very important. And lastly, where do I want you, the coaches, uh, to help? You only, with your case, you only have one hour. That's not a long time. So you better focus your coaching team on those questions where input will be most helpful to you. So that's um, the... Uh, the first 10, 15 minutes here. Um, on the side, during this process, uh, the, the coaches basically listen uh, and try to get a good picture, a good understanding of the bigger picture. If there are uh, things unclear, 
um, the coaches are asking, if the coaches are noticing that all the time is being spent here or here or on these first three but not on the fourth one, then the coaches, uh, you know, ask these clarifying questions and help the case giver to really clarify the situation. This is not the time uh, to get lost in details. You don't need a detailed understanding of the situation, but everyone needs a big picture understanding of the current situation. And uh, so that's kind of the main thing going on here. The coaches do not, at this stage, do not give advice, do not try to fix the situation. Now, for most of us, I mean, mo most of, you know, you know, people like me, uh, like us, kind of most of the people we work with, when we um, are in a situation where somebody is sharing their problem, this is the urge that comes up from deep down. It says, I have been there, I know this problem, here's what you need to do, you need to do one, two, three. So this is a habitual way of responding to a situation that I haven't really maybe fully understand, uh, uh, understood yet. And um, that's not what we want to do here. So we suspend, as coaches, we suspend the urge of fixing the problem, giving advice, and instead move into step number three, which is creating a moment of stillness. And a moment of stillness, you know, doesn't need to be too long, could be just two, three minutes. And during that moment of stillness, we connect to our heart and we connect to the resonance that the entire story that we heard is creating within us, within my mind, within my heart, and within my whole body, really. And so as we move into the stillness, some people just sit still, other people kind of make a little drawing or something or are taking notes. Basically, what you do in these two or three minutes is that you connect to your heart and you connect, to, uh, you, you begin to pay attention to the resonance. What are the images that are evoked in my mind by uh, the story I just heard? What are the feelings that I'm picking up, that I'm noticing? Um, and what are gestures that sort of uh, embody the essence of what we just heard? Remember, um, uh, in one case, uh, there is um, somebody, uh, you know, one of the coaches said, well, you know, the way I heard your story, it's really like uh, the image I see is you're in a restaurant, you're a waiter, there are only two of you serving a total of 120 uh, 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 customers. So you're kind of uh, uh, awfully busy kind of running around and, you know, uh, you know uh, keeping everyone happy in that situation. I remember a second uh, case where, you know, somebody said, well, you are like, um, so the situation I heard feels like a head without a body, kind of a head that's disconnected from, you know, uh, 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 the, a body and kind of from actually the, the capacity of doing something about it. It's all just ideas. And uh, I remember uh, uh, a third one where kind of a person was, um, she was um, uh, describing like a career change situation, a choice that she was facing kind of entering, kind of leaving one organization, entering another one and I didn't exactly know what to do. And then uh, in mirroring back, kind of uh, the coach said, well, uh, the way you really describe the situation, what it feels to me is like you're standing in front of a dragon. It's a huge dragon. And kind of, and, and kind of what you're uh, contemplating doing is to move you know, into the mouth. It's, it has, the dragon has a huge mouth. And what you're contemplating is whether or not you move inside that dragon. So that was, uh, uh, that's another image. So that, those are images. And then kind of feelings, is feelings like uh, joy, happiness, sadness, anger. So kind of, uh, it's an important um, capacity that we need to develop you know, in doing developmental work. What's kind of the emotional energy kind of that we are, that's, that's um, evoked by 
a case giver. It gives us an important uh, information about the situation at issue. And then gestures. Uh, so gestures is like the essence of what you heard of the situation. So I will, um, you know, before inviting Adam to comment on this video, that's kind of the centerpiece of the whole process, to share some of his experience. Let me kind of just um, uh, role model one or two. What are examples of gestures? So gestures is what's the essence of what we heard? Kind of what is the, so here's one. You see me turning away from a situation. I'm facing a situation and I'm turning away. So that would be one. So here's another one. I'm facing a situation and now this is happening with me. I'm getting smaller. Smaller. Still smaller. And now maybe I look up. You feel the difference? It's a different gesture. It's a different essence of how I relate to a situation. But it could be also, a gesture could be also something like this. I'm starting here and I'm beginning to rise. Notice the difference. So, gestures. Here's the trick about gestures. You don't know what it is because you only have a feeling. You have a feeling of a situation. And then you just connect with that feeling and you spontaneously translate that into a gesture. But before you do it, you don't know what it is. So, you connect with the feeling, and then without thinking, really, you express that. Uh, in some kind of gesture, and that's what it is. So you're as surprised as everyone else, and that's your gift. Because you, by doing it, you unearth, you make visible a deeper dimension of the case that wasn't fully articulated yet. And that's what I'm offering to the case giver as a gift. Now, obviously, that's much easier if you're together in person. If you're uh, virtually, you just, you know, either you demonstrate that on a, you know, on your video screen, and that's possible. I have also been in great sessions that were just audio, and people were describing the gesture that they felt, that they experienced. So you just describe that. That's also possible. What was your experience? I mean, this is really the heart of this whole process. What came to mind as I was listening to you is something that, uh, Otto, you have said a number of times, and one of your mentors here Ed Schein says, which is that everything that happens to you is data. So I was thinking of that as you were describing images, feelings, um, gestures. So if I'm listening to somebody, how, what, what feelings are we talking about? So if somebody's telling me what their case is, I might notice that I'm getting like a tightening feeling in my chest. So that's interesting. That's, maybe it's related, maybe it's not, but I pay attention to it because it's something happening during the situation. And I notice it and I may want to share it back. I heard you describing the situation and it made me feel really tight in my shoulders or in my chest. Um, the same is true for images as well. So I remember once we were in Indonesia and I was listening to somebody talk about this massive challenge that they had of trying to bring together different parts of an organization that haven't really worked together. And I got an image in my mind of, of a woman who was gardening. She was in her garden. She, was, she had her hands in the dirt. And rationally, I had no idea what this image had anything to do with the situation she was describing. But it was there nonetheless. So you notice the images you have. You notice the feelings that you have. And you don't censor them and you don't judge them. They're there. They're data. They're interesting information. And that's part of the process is, is what we're going to describe next is the mirroring back, is the sharing. Thanks. It's really a great point. Um, and uh, so I remember kind of uh, uh, my mentor, Ed Schein, kind of the author of process consultation and inventor of process cons consultation, very often saying, everything we experience is data. That's really what this process is about. 
It's about deep data, right? Everyone's talking about big data today. This is not big data. This is deep data. It's kind of surfacing, unearthing the deeper layers of our own experience, which are data and which, if attended to, can give uh, us very helpful information in terms of how to take the next steps. The first is stillness, which is you connect with your inner experience. You listen to the resonance. What are the images, the feelings, the gestures that you sense? that situation and then uh, the second the, the next step here step number four is the mirroring that you offer back that you share with the case giver kind of what came up for you so each of the coaches is sharing what are the images the feelings or the gestures and or the gestures that came up for me so you just go around and everyone is sharing that and um, it's like and when I share that, if I share my gesture, it's more like a gift to the case giver rather than let me fix your problem type of um, attitude behind that. Okay. So this is, um, so that's kind of stillness, mirroring. The case giver, you know, as she or he is listening to uh, what um, the coaches are sharing during the mirroring, is taking everyone everything in so it's it's a real gift that you receive you begin to see your own life your own situation through the lens of the souls of the other coaches right kind of the their um, deeper resonances that they share and then usually what happens is that the case giver says oh that's really true i didn't really talk about that but you know seeing uh, listening to that image or seeing that gesture that's what's coming to my mind. So a whole, usually kind of the problem, the situation is being reframed in some profound ways, kind of uh, accessing this deep data here. And then um, the case giver is reflecting a little bit on that. And generative dialogue means everyone is, uh, you know, having a um, generative, a helpful conversation that is focusing on helping the case giver to deal with her situation more intentional and more generative and more uh, effective. So you build on each other's ideas, you ask more questions maybe, kind of to explore some of the themes, deeper themes that have been um, surfaced here, and then you move it forward in order to really be helpful to uh, the situation of the case giver and how she could respond to it. You, you finish up with uh, closing remarks, kind of first the coaches, maybe there is a, a last thing I want to underline or to add what I haven't said before as a coach, short closing remarks from the coaches, and then the case giver is looking back and from three angles and basically saying, okay, so here is um, uh, from, you know, in terms of ideas, here are the two or three new ideas that I came across and how that helped me to reframe the situation maybe uh, given uh, to my initial framing here is kind of looking you know tapping to the open heart dimension uh, uh, connecting with taking stock of my energy kind of this is kind of how i feel about it right now kind of my energy is up or down or whatever kind of you connect with that and then uh, open will really means action so here there are two or three actions that clarified for me that I'm going to take in the next week or two. And maybe there's like a third action or a fourth one that I would like to take, but I don't know yet how, and I need to inquire. So that's basically um, uh, wrapping it up. And then you give yourself another minute or two to capture the key takeaways. And what we experience is, although really each case is very different and um, uh, so we bring in very different situations, but you know, if uh, almost all the cases I have ever been into have been also very useful for me as a coach, I'm not only helping someone else, but um, I know the situation from my own life. And uh, so the, the learnings are, ju are just as profound on the side of the coaches as they are on the side of um, the case giver. So that's, so summing up uh, what this process really is, is, um, um, you know, you basically, many of you know Case Connects and stuff like this. So what is special here? 
What's special is that as you start here, you really pay attention to not only talk about the outside situation, but also the inside situation, your own learning edge. Then, instead of fixing the problem, you add this dimension of stillness, of resonance, and then mirroring back the images, feelings, and gestures. And as that kind of has been surfaced, as a group, kind of, you kind of take that, um, that body of resonance that you created kind of with this uh, deeper surfacing of the uh, reality and build a generative conversation around that. And here you basically go with the flow, have some closing remarks, and this is it. So this is kind of basically um, uh, easy. But what you pay attention to is kind of these early conditions that allow you to go deeper as a conversation otherwise would do if you um, do it without. Adam, any um, additions, kind of uh, helpful hints that, that we can give as people move into their first round of practice here? We talked about not judging the images. I think the other important point in all of this is to not judge yourself, especially as a coach. So you may find that it's actually really difficult. You're hearing something that you can completely relate to. Somebody who maybe seems to have gone through something very much like what you've gone through. So you may notice that you want to give advice, but just notice that. And that's great data that you get on yourself about where you are in your own practice of listening. So just pay attention to that. It's not a matter of judging it and just notice it. And then the only other thing is that next week we will come back and we'll do a check-in at the beginning of the week and we'll hear some of your feedback. How did this go? What worked for you? What was difficult? What were some of the challenges that you faced? So we're really looking forward to seeing how this goes and hearing from you over the course of the next few days. So enjoy the process. We usually experience that there's a steep learning curve kind of uh, within this whole process. And um, uh, obviously kind of uh, in what we do in this class is based on a general case clinic principle, which is that all the specific material of a case stays confidential within the case clinic, will not be shared to anyone outside without checking with the case giver. So the confidentiality is kind of a key principle here at work. Enjoy the process, and uh, we look forward to checking in uh, uh, with you again in a week from now to review kind of your learnings come from using this for the first time.